Hello everyone, good morning, good evening, wherever you are at the world. Uh, we are on our 10th lesson, or you can call it a conversation in this, I don't even call it a course, but a series of talks, a random series of talks that don't, don't even have a, a fixed schedule beside the fact that they are all going into this playlist in YouTube. But uh, I'm getting some good feedbacks and of course you can always ask either on Facebook or on YouTube. If you're asking on YouTube, if even uh, on previous lessons, I uh, still see the notifications so I can relate to it. Uh, and of course you have the links to the regular study, uh, uh, to the regu regular study uh, a program that you can register uh, in the in the description either on YouTube or on Facebook you also have the link to the book that we're working with which is the uh, Kabbalah for Beginners uh, uh, book and also you have the link to the YouTube uh, channel that's uh, the YouTube not channel please that's it more or less okay now let's do a uh, short review of last time and then we'll continue so last time basically uh, we gave an overview of the course where we at so if we're talking about how reality came to be uh, to our world how uh, our world developed until a person start to awaken with the question of why or what is the reason or what is the purpose and then it goes b and then he or she goes back ascending to the source to what we call the creator or the world of in and so uh, and we talked about it that we're talking that in Kabbalah right now in this series of conversation we're talking about this part how everything came to be uh, initially and how from phase zero to phase four the creature created uh, no the creator created the creature which is completely opposite of it okay so if the creator is completely about bestow and giving the creature is only about receiving in Hebrew we call this a uh, creature a kli or a vessel to receive the abundance from above what else uh, do you see here in the drawing Okay, so we said that once the creature uh, uh, recognizes how much it's opposite to the creator, it restricts itself, it decides not to receive anything. This is called in Kabbalah the first restrictions in Tzum Aleph. These are all stuff we talked about last time, okay? And after the Tzim Tzum Aleph, after the first restriction, the creature is left as a black point that doesn't receive anything. But because the goal of creation is to bestow to the creatures, meaning to uh, fill them with endless uh, abundance, then the light keeps coming in. This is called direct light, or in Hebrew it's called Or Yashar. But the creature doesn't want to receive it. The force of restriction is called the Masach that I don't want to receive anything for myself, just like the allegory of the host and the guest. So the guest doesn't want to eat anything, and the host co continue and saying, but I made it all for you, please eat, this is for me. And then through this uh, uh, constant uh, pleading, together with this constant uh, rejection on the side of the guest, uh, now the guest can relate his hunger or her hunger to uh, the creator. And now it can say, okay, so the Creator made his hunger in me, and he also made his uh, meal, and now I can receive in order to give him pleasure, not for my own sake. So the ability to relate all of reality back to the uh, Creator, this is also called in Kabbalah, none else beside him, that uh, we determine that all of reality is, uh, uh, is coming from one root, one source, and it should go back to that source. This is called Or Choser, which means returning light in Hebrew, and the ability to receive the revelation of the Creator in order to give him contentment. This is called Or Pnimi. This is more or less what we've talked about last time, okay? We've talked about some more stuff. We'll soon go, we'll dive into it. But what is important to remember is that all of these things happen where? inside of the creature okay so we have like this screen or the, this box whatever you want to imagine that and in this box we have a part that we reveal as the creator or the source of an of everything there is a part that we reveal as ourselves or our consciousness and there is all of the rest oh, sorry this is the wrong drawing all of the rest 
okay, which is actually the buffer, what comes between us and the creator. Soon we'll dive more into that, okay. What else did we talk about last time? We talked about last time, I know what, let's move, okay, this is too in depth before that. Okay, so we talked about la last time that in Kabbalah, in this descending from the world of and self to our world, we have different layers, different levels of recognition of the cre creature, how it perceives the creator, okay? So, uh, the farther it goes from the creator, meaning the more opposite it gets, it recognizes the, cr the creator less. And this, and every layer of recognition, which is lower than the previous layer, is called world. In Hebrew, it's called uh, olam, it means olam. Olam in Hebrew comes from the word concealment, alama. Okay, so actually you can say that if in and so uh, the creature revealed the creator and really uh, knew it, now you can talk about it that it starts to see it less and less and less, close the light, close the eyes, until our world in which there is complete concealment of the creator. Okay, good. Now, uh, these worlds, they are exactly what we've talked about as the buffer between the creator and the creature, meaning that everything that the creature reveals as external to oneself, uh, it's, uh, it's the mechanism between the creator and the creature. So the creator actually operates on this externality of the creature. The creature learns or needs to operate as well on that externality uh, in order to be uh, similar to the Creator. And through this externality, through this system of the world, there is a dialogue between the creature and the Creator. We'll talk about it later on, but this is very interesting. Uh, uh, but this is very interesting uh, fact that uh, what we will call later internal work, spiritual work, is not so uh, internal in terms of one's self that needs to operate inside of oneself, but actually it has also an external uh, dimension to it, but maybe we'll talk about it later. Okay, again, friends or students are asking for Spanish. Sorry, <laughs> I haven't learned Spanish yet. I'll try. Um, okay. So, we talked about the concept of time as well. We said that time is a sequence of states. Each state represents a, a, a specific uh, yeah, state, like a specific world, a specific moment, a specific uh, uh, space in which there are certain conditions between what we said as the creature and the creator and what's between them. We also talked about it then, that in Kabbalah we can uh, divide each uh, state into what we call 10 sefirot, 10 different uh, frequencies, 10 different combinations between the creature and the creator, in which uh, the upper sphere is called Keta, which is a crown in Hebrew, it means the, the, the aspect of the creator, and there is Malchut, which is the creature, uh, from the word a uh, melech, a uh, king that the creature wants to rule instead of the creator. And then we have all the other spheroth, eight spheroth, which are in between, just like the worlds, okay? So we said chokhmah, bina, chesed, gvura, tiferet, netzach, od, yisod. I guess for most of you it's just names for now, but it's names, that's how we learn everything, also our reality. So when I have a small child, I tell him this is a cow, this is a sheep, this go mu, this go meh. And it doesn't understand more than that. In some countries, you don't you say this go boo and this go be. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the fact, the important thing is that everything is about uh, every pixel of reality has a creature dimension in it, or, or I wouldn't say dimension, like a creature uh, ingredient of it, a, 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 cre a creator ingredient in it, and the uh, relationship between them. Okay. Also, we talked about the partsuf, the spiritual partsuf, which has the same uh, uh, parts. Ju we just uh, talk about them in, in talk about them in a different way. So you have the ro the rosh, the, the head, the part that does the calculation, how much the creature can resemble the creator. Then you have the sof, the part on which uh, 
the creature is opposite to the creator and cannot receive anything and there is the part in which both of them become as one okay also we, we, we drew it in another way we talked about the creature the world and the creator again these are different diagrams of the same uh, emotional uh, uh, like aspects or uh, observations and we gave another example we said that each moment each state we can talk about three axes so one is the soul meaning the self the other is the world meaning the externality and the third is the year meaning uh, the the level of attainment in that point of what will be later on the creator okay what else did we talk about last time uh, it's the same thing just in a more basic drawing. Okay, more. let's see if we have questions so far. No question besides the request for Spanish that maybe later on we'll get to that. Good, now what are we going to do now? And uh, now we'll talk about, uh, no, now we'll continue from page uh, 65. 65 in the book of Allah for beginners again you have the book in the link if you don't have the book you, you have the link to the PDF in the description okay uh, page 65 in the books from all we've learned so far we still don't know which of the five worlds five worlds meaning what we've talked about uh, Adam Kadmon, Atzilut, Briah, Yetzirah and Asiyah five why five again we talked about the five phases of direct light and we'll later see later on that we have five senses, five uh, main parts of the Rosh, the Toch. It all comes from the same structure. Uh, so, from all we've learned so far, we still don't know which of the five worlds we talked about is our physical world. Actually, none of them is ours. Keep in mind that there are no places in spirituality, only states. The higher the world, the more altruistic a state it represents. The reason our world isn't mentioned anywhere is that the spiritual worlds are altruistic and our world is like us, egoistic. Because egoism is opposite to altruism, our world is detached from the system of the spiritual worlds. This is why Kabbalists did not mention it in the structure. Uh, in the structure, just a second, they de depicted I hope I pronounce it correctly. They depicted in their books. Okay, so uh, this is this is true not only to worlds. Everything that Kabbalists write in all of the holy books that actually talk about spirituality, like from the uh, Book of Yetzirah to the Bible to the I don't know what Gemara, Talmud, whatever you want, or the Book of Zohar, none of them are talking about our world. We, because of our ignorance, usually uh, try to. Uh, understand that in a historic context, like uh, stories about people, like in Greek mythology or something, but they all talk about, again, different states, not even not places, because a place is a state, a place is a desire. What is a state? A state is a certain will to receive that has some kind of relation to the Creator, just like we talked about, some kind of complete state uh, which represents a relationship between the uh, creator and the creature and what's between them okay and in spirituality it's all about uh, a connection between the creature and the creator and that can only be if the cre if the creature uh, acquires attribution similar to the creator meaning it wants to bestow just like the creator does not think of itself only to fulfill all others that's how the cre the creature needs to be and as long as it's not like that uh, the creature experience a broken reality mm -hmm. what is a broken reality a broken reality is our world okay uh, in which uh, each one only wants to fulfill oneself okay so if you remember we also talked about workable and unworkable desires that the workable desires are the ones that can be in connection with the creator and the unworkable desires are the more egoistic uh, 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 desires which are more opposite to the Creator. Earlier in this chapter, we said that the four phase pattern in the basis is the basis for everything that exists. Therefore, when the desires were split in into those that could receive light and those that could not, they followed the same four phase pattern. The desires that could receive light are called workable desires, and desires that cannot 
cannot receive light are called unworkable desires. The workable desires created the upper worlds, and the unworkable desires created creation and later our world. This is very interesting. Again, it's like what it's like what I experience as more external in my reality are actually my own desires, which are closer to the upper light, which are more corrected, and what I uh, feel more as myself as my essence of being this is actually the will to receive that like a uh, jails me i don't know if you can say that in he english but it's like a jail it, it cuts me off it breaks me from the general fabric of creation from the general connection of the oneness of the creator okay so the workable desires at the root phase created the world adam kadmon and the unworkable ones uh, which remain dark without light were called still and formed the still unchanging level of creation. So again, the the more caress, the more uh, will to receive, the more egoistic the desire, uh, the less light and the less connection it has with the Creator, meaning the less livelihood, the, the less life. So it is considered uh, still or dead. Uh, depends on what level you are talking about. Because in order to have life, you need to have change. You need to have uh, expansion and extension, or whatever you call that. Uh, so you need to like inhale and exhale. Okay, so you need to have a, 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 a will to receive operates and then a will to bestow. And, then, and both of them working in combination. But if you have only will to receive and you just want to suck it off oneself, uh, you're like a, a, you're like a, a cancer cell uh, that uh, causes death to the whole body. And by that you're actually, uh, first of all, killing uh, yourself. Workable desire and uh, spirituality, in, in a spiritual sense, I mean. Workable desires at phase one created the world at Silut, and the unworkable ones remain dark and constitute the vegetative level of creation. Workable desires at phase two created the world Bria, and the unworkable ones constitute the animate level of creation. Similarly, workable desires at phase three constitute the world of Yetzira, and the unworkable ones constitute the speaking level of creation. And finally, workable desires at phase four constitute the world Asiya and the unworkable ones remain dark and constitute the spiritual level of creation. Okay, so this is um, this is like a, this is not so so uh, familiar or uh, or very used kind of division. Not I'll write it because they mentioned it in the book. Uh, so basically, what they're saying is just like we have the worlds uh, at Silut. Bria, Yetzira, uh, and the Sia. Actually, they start from Adam Kadmon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. So we had Adam Kadmon. Hmm. Adam Kadmon, Atsilut, Bria, Yetzira, and the Sia. So this, uh, these are called here workable desires. Workable. And uh, they're saying that against that you have the levels which are unworkable, and so this is so this is still a vegetative, animate, uh, speaking, and what? How did they call the last one? Spiritual. Okay, so uh, this is speaking and this is spiritual, uh, and these are called work unworkable desires. I guess they want to relate to it that uh, actually also in our world, what you call our world, there is a structure of, um, of there is a similar structure to the general reality. And this is another uh, principle in spirituality that I won't go into that now, but uh, it, it talks about self-resemblance, that each part has the hole in it okay it's very much like fractals if every, if anybody knows about it if not just uh, google it fractals or you can say that even in a human cell uh, you have all the dna of the body so you can actually duplicate another body 
we won't go into that. There is another deep question here: Why is this uh, the lowest world, which is Asia, actually is against the highest level? But uh, again, I won't go into that now. This is a whole lesson of its own. Okay, so uh, this is a, a illustration of fig in Figure Six. You see that they divide Phase Four actually to the workable desires, which are like the worlds and the unworkable desires which are creation okay and this is interesting this kind of division and um, okay then this is nice you can also look on it like that that in phase four you have all the worlds and our world which is also divided and again there is this point here why the the spiritual is the lowest but I won't go into that now. Uh, in phase four, desires are divided into workable desires and unworkable desires. The workable desires create the upper world and the unworkable desires create creation. The upper world's task is to teach creation how to receive and how to bestow. What does it mean to teach? Actually, through the worlds, we learn how to resemble the creator. Okay, we'll see it later on in Kabbalah when we talk about uh, work in the ten or practical Kabbalah. We actually talk about how through uh, practicing the right connection and exercising uh, a certain uh, state of mind towards others, one uh, becomes uh, similar to the Creator. Okay, uh, let's see if I have enough time for that. Yeah, okay, let's finish this. Okay, know that the strongest desires, the most egoistic and seemingly most remote from the Creator are called spiritual, just as in the four phases, the most powerful desire which is to become like the Creator. Hence, only the last degree, which is seemingly the darkest and most egoistic, can develop our desire to be like the Creator and achieve spirituality. This is, again, a very interesting uh, thing. Uh, why is it that in Kabbalah, the most egoistic people get into spirituality? Because we used, used in our world to think that uh, spiritual people are people that don't want much, they eat a cup of rice a day, they lay on the ground, whatever. Actually, in Kabbalah, uh, these people cannot attain spirituality in the true sense. They can only, uh, if they nullify completely the will to receive, they become like a, like the animate level in our world, or like the still level in our world. So they sense something which is semi-spiritual in the sense that it's some kind of distance illumination of what is the Creator. Uh, some feeling of oneness, of a complete flow, or whatever, or eternal flow. In Kabbalah, when we talk about attaining spirituality, meaning attaining the Creator in depth, for that you need to have the most advanced ego, and you need to be willing to work with that and overcome it. It turns out that creation is the only part that still needs to be worked on, so it can receive light. Let us learn how creation evolved, how it became our world, and how we can correct it. Okay, so this is the next... Uh, chapter, I guess. Uh, uh, so, how it evolved, how it became our world, and how can we correct it. Again, it's very similar to the three axes drawing of mention. Uh, yeah, I like the phrase worked on. Uh, it turns out that creation is the only part that still needs to be worked on. Okay, so like, that we need to actually uh, correct. Good. Actually, we only need to correct ourselves, because the world is already corrected. It is important to remember that the upper worlds do not actually exist until we discover them, as we develop our spiritual perception, as we become like the Creator. Yeah, okay, so don't be mistaken that this world exists somewhere in space, or somewhere deep in the ocean, or whatever. Uh, these are, again, levels of consciousness, of uh, recognition of the Creator. This is why they are called worlds, meaning levels of concealment. Okay, so until a person develops, actually, he doesn't reveal these worlds. He, can, he doesn't even reveal our world, because in order to determine that you are in our world, you need to determine that there is something other than our world. Because we only perceive things through a uh, negative, through uh, opposite, uh, opposite attributions and, compar and comparison between two or more.
The reason companies speak of these wars in past tense is that they wrote their books for us after they climbed from our world to the spiritual worlds and then told us what they had found. To reveal the upper world, we too must climb there and see for ourselves. The only way to do that is by becoming similar to the Creator, altruistic. Okay. Good. So this is something we talked about. Also, just to mention, going back here, that if we are talking about that all the uh, holy books are actually registrations or uh, like uh, the research fi findings of uh, of the study of Kabbalist of the upper world, you can say that uh, that only after a Kabbalist actually attains, meaning ascending to the level of the Creator, he can describe what he went through. Okay. So all the time our attainment is going backwards. Okay, it's very similar to. Uh, it's very similar to, for example, I'll give an example that uh, when we grow up and we become parents ourselves, we understand ourselves better going back, like in our childhood. Okay, so the the further you advance and you attain more of the Creator, uh, you reveal how reality came to be. So you can actually describe the. Uh, the system of laws and how uh, how it is in a certain la layer and how from this layer everything that belows it actually is uh, obliged or enforced or must be like it is in order to allow the the creature in the creatures in it to attain and to rise uh, in the level of consciousness. Okay. Okay, so we and we reach this point of uh, the common soul. Let's see if we have questions. Uh, this is not my question. Uh, why do I check? Okay, let's see if we have questions. No, just here I can see only people saying hello. Okay, and here do we have question? Okay, the 10 is like woven network of physics. We see that unfolds itself and hold and folds back to the place that places rest light hidden. Okay, there is something in that, but there is no question. Chris is asking, what are your thoughts on Jesus? This is something you need to say. You'll see that there is a lot of resemblance between, uh, like in that period of time, most of the people that wanted to attain spirituality had uh, to learn Kabbalah. Okay, also uh, you have Reuchlin saying that uh, actually uh, Socrates uh, you, uh, invaded the word philosophy to, to describe Kabbalah for the Greeks. Okay, so uh, like in that time uh, when the nation of Israel, most of the nation was in spiritual attainment, uh, many of the people that wanted to achieve spirituality had to so take something out of it. Uh, that not his name, I didn't understand this. Uh, okay, I forget about. Okay, I don't know. Paul is talking about Greeks somehow. It's not a question. Is the tree of life mentioned in Genesis related to the. Yeah, uh, okay, so Chris is actually asking what is the tree of life, okay? So I haven't come to that yet. But uh, you'll see later on that there is a in the some we divide the Malchut, the last Firah, into the tree of knowledge and the tree of life. Okay, so from the tree of knowledge, these are like the unworkable desires, and the tree of life is like the workable desires that fr through it you achieve a connection with the Creator, which is called life. And when the general soul will talk about it, uh, uh, that we, we call Adam, meaning the system. A thought that it can actually work and correct the, the unworkable desires because it went through some kind of illusion. This is uh, through desires that are called Eve uh, and the snake. Also, you need to understand what are these desires because in spirituality, a female is called, in Hebrew, a female is called Nekeva. It comes from the word Nekev, which is like a de deficiency. So the deficiencies that was awakened in the general soul that is called Adam and a very specific deficiency which is uncorrected, which is called the snake, uh, gave the illusion that you can actually work with the unworkable desires in order to bestow the Creator, and that was a mistake. Uh, and from that we have the shattering, what we will later call the sin, 
and uh, and and a, and a greater concealment, a greater disconnection from spirituality. So we will need to fix and correct that uh, from our world. Okay, I guess we answered all. Okay, when will we meet next? I have no clue. I have no clue actually. <laughs> when I can, I stream. Uh, you can follow the playlist on YouTube. That's the best option I can give you. And. Uh, that's it, more or less, okay? So have a nice uh, evening, nice uh, day, whatever, wherever you are. And sorry again for the Spanish-speaking Spanish students. Uh, maybe I learned Spanish. Uh, just a question, if you learned that before Chinese or after Chinese, where, where are there more people who want to learn about Kabbalah? <laughs> okay, so bye for now.